So, and in the course, we do focus on an RTS, which is a good, it's a real-time multiplayer game, but it's not as Twitch latency dependent as, say, a first-person shooter. Uh, what have you seen with Mirror and first-person shooters? Can it handle it? Is it fine? Uh, can people stretch what we're teaching them in this course into any other genre they can think of, or are there going to be some limitations that you know Mirror can only take them so far? Um, I would say there are, there definitely aren't limitations, but like different frameworks can sometimes have uh, easier make it easier for you to do certain things. So mm -hmm. first person shooters are definitely possible in this. Um, like, like you say, the difference is twitchy movement. An RTS doesn't have twitchy movement. You click, you tell the server, I'd like to move these units here. The server will move them and you see it sync back. Uh, and you don't really feel any delay because unlike in a competitive shooter, you don't need the like absolute immediate response. Um, so this is about really lag compensation. And you can definitely implement your own lag compensation. And we didn't need to do it for the RTS. But if we ever do add another game to this multiplayer course, then it might definitely be something to cover. It's, it's a very advanced topic. I mean, even AAA game studios now are still battling, you know, how best to do lag compensation. And, um, yeah. And, you know, I think on the... Oh, sorry. No, go on. Yeah, I was going to say on that point for for the folks listening at the moment who are early in their game development journey, or even even later on, but doing this as a hobbyist or maybe as a casual indie, the important thing is to not try to push the technology to a place where it doesn't want to go to, and to be smart with your design. So at the moment, making a multiplayer game. You can make a game such as a real-time strategy game or, uh, or or even a game that's a turn-based strategy game or a game that's a, a dungeon crawler, a game that's cooperative. Those sorts of games are going to be friendlier to make with an outcome that's more possible than trying to make a really aggressive Twitch-based first-person shooter arena deathmatch type game. And so if you try to take on that beast without necessarily having the knowledge to do it or the the... Um, I guess the team to support it, like you're saying, Nathan, a lot of teams out there making shooters are still grappling with how do we, um, how do we make sure that lag is not an issue. And there's a lot of people trying to solve that problem on the team. If you're a single solo indie, then don't take on that challenge because it's not going to end in something that's going to be joyful. Look at the, the constraints that you've got and make something amazing within those constraints. Yeah, if you're making an indie game and you need really responsive movement, but you don't really care about cheaters because maybe your game is a casual play with friends game, then you could just have the movement be client side. You don't need the server to authorize movement. And mm -hmm. that would result in the players being able to press the forward key and immediately move forward on their machine. And then all the cl other clients would receive that as soon as it's told to them over the network. And that would mean it's as fast as it can be for everyone, but with the only downside being that player could easily cheat. Or if they start lagging, they might look like they're glitching around because their player will start lagging too. So there are always drawbacks, that kind of stuff. But just like you said, and I said, yeah, AAA companies are still battling with it. And if you're a solo indie dev, the time you'll put in to try and get something like this to work well, the result you, you get probably won't be as good as what they would get. And you'll also be putting in more time that you could be spending on making a good game. So yep. it, it's just all about the trade-offs, really. Awesome.